All right, welcome back to Power Forward. Justin White alongside Mateen Cleves. Mateen, what is good, my man? Oh, yeah, it's all good, Jay White. Man, I am flying high and, and super excited uh, to get this segment going, man. Well, Mateen, you know that we talk all the time about all the similarities between sports and business, business and sports. You know, they just seem to go hand in hand. Former athletes uh, go on to have successful business careers, and it, it just seems like there's something uh, about sports and business that, that just goes well together. Uh, you certainly know uh, all about that, being a being a former athlete, now being in business yourself. Oh yeah, for sure. And and I think we we kind of know the blueprint, you know, I mean, because you've been you you were able to be successful in sports, so that's somewhat of the blueprint. Now, if you put that same energy into business, then you most likely are going to have the same success. Well, uh, our, our guest today knows a little something about that. Uh, he is a former professional athlete, former basketball player, uh, one of your guys. He has been in business now for almost two decades. We are pleased to be joined by Desmond Ferguson. He is the owner of Moneyball Sportswear. Desmond, thanks so much for joining us here on Power Forward. Moneyball is in the building. What's up, man? Great to, great to be here. I appreciate y'all having me. You know, uh, I didn't know a whole lot about the podcast. You know, over, over weeks and months, I've seen my team, you know, post a Power Forward uh, you know, podcast, so I had to do my little homework, but I, I really love that interview I did last with uh, Mama Sue, and then I checked out the uh, Gazelle Sports as well, so uh, now I'll definitely be tuning in more, but uh, it, it's great to be here. How, how about that, Mateen, doing his homework oh, before yeah. he jumps on? <laughs> I'm not surprised, <laughs> not, not at all. No, no, Desmond, you've got a, you, you've got a very interesting story. Um, you, you know, your, your playing days – um, you know, you, you started out playing uh, college basketball. Well, you, you're from you're from the Lansing area, right? Yep. And then you you start out playing uh, your, your college basketball at the University of Missouri. Uh, you come back home and, and continue playing at the University of Detroit Mercy. And then you have this this uh, long career playing overseas. Uh, make sure I'm getting this right. Eleven years in 11 different countries. Yep. Yep. There you go. <laughs> 11 years, 11 years. So that just lets you know I didn't stay the whole time in all those countries. <laughs> <laughs> he is, he is well-traveled. Uh, but, but, you know, going back to even, even early in your professional, um, uh, your professional career as a basketball player, um, business was always something that you were not only interested in, but something that you were very much planning on doing. Tell us more about that. Right. Uh, yeah. I always had an entrepreneurial spirit. It, it really st- Started uh, cutting hair in my mama's basement, man, uh, at the age of 11, 12, 13 years old. Uh, just being like the neighborhood barber and, uh, you know, first day of school, you know, prom as we get to high school, all that stuff. So, um, yeah, being able to buy my first car at 16 off of $4 haircuts, you know, uh, that, you know, that, that let me know that, okay, I want to work for myself when I got older, not knowing that, you know, it would go to be Moneyball Sports. But that, but that kind of started my entrepreneurial spirit. And, uh, you know, I, I definitely credit my mother for allowing me to, you know, do the things I was passionate about, and went, and even she went to school for, for 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 nails. So we down in the basement, she doing nails. I'm cutting hair. So we had a a, a little barber barber beauty shop downstairs in a, in my mama's basement. Well, I that's I just learned something new. I didn't know he was a barber and was able to to make enough money to buy his. I mean, a car at 16. So he was a really good uh, businessman at an early age. But I'm gonna tell you another thing about Desmond. He was a really good shooter. Uh, as you know, at an early age and as an adult, and you have to hear this, Justin, because this is crazy. Tell our listeners, uh, Desmond, where Moneyball came from. Like, where did where did your name come from? Yeah, so like Mateen said, uh, I was always known a pretty good shooter. And my senior year, I played on Team Michigan, uh, based out of Detroit. And uh, you know, I, I came out in '95, so we had you know four or five of the guys that was top ten in the country. When you talk about Terrence Roberson out of Saginaw, uh, Albert White out of Inkster. Uh, rest in peace, Robert Tractor Trailer out of Detroit, and then uh, Kevin Garnett played on that t- team as well. Him and and the reason being, him and uh, him and Trailer were real close. They played in a lot of the All Star All American games together, being out of Chicago. And a lot of people don't know that uh, KG was you know pretty much going to go either South Carolina or Michigan if he went to college, but he obviously went pro in the rest of history. But uh, I played on that great AAU team uh, my senior year in '95, uh, and uh, my team was down there too, and out in Ohio, so in Ohio. Was you playing with Team Detroit at the time? Yeah. For uh, yeah. that for that one tournament, yeah, but. Uh, Play with Team Michigan, so here I am, a guy that's barely uh, top ten in the state. You know, playing with guys that are top ten in the country, and uh, I was a pretty good shooter. So that particular tournament, I was coming across half court. I mean, letting it fly. I mean, every time I would shoot, 
KG would be yelling, money ball, money ball, while the, while the ball was in the air. And I, that was probably the hottest I've been from the longest, from the, from the deepest distance. And I, I, I got the nickname money ball. So that was back in 95. And fast forward in 2002, when I started to decide uh, what I wanted to name my business, I was writing all kind of different names and couldn't come up with anything. And I'm like, what? I got a nickname money ball. So I did the research on that, knowing that uh, it was a lottery and stuff called money ball, but we we're able to trademark it from a, a clothing. Uh, so that's what kind of, I, you know, I credit both. Robert Trek, the trailer, rest in peace, and Kevin Garnett uh, for the nickname of Moneyball, but it all it all stemmed from that AAU uh, uh, team, Team Michigan, back in '95. Man, that's a great story. I, I did not know that, and uh, you know Kevin Garnett being the the former Celtic, uh, obviously you know great career with the Timberwolves before that, but winning a championship with my Celtics, he's always going to have a special place in my heart. So uh, <laughs> that that is a very cool story, Desmond. Um, so all right, so, so Moneyball Sportswear, I, I, I mentioned before. You know, you've been at this now uh, for 18 years. So tell our listeners out there, you know, what is Moneyball Sportswear? You know, because we, we know that, um, you know, you make uniforms, but there, there's a lot of companies out there that do this. So what is it about your company um, that sets it up? <clears throat> yeah, uh, well, we, we all started, uh, the whole vision, how we started Moneyball Sportswear was, uh, I knew once I got done playing the game of basketball, that I want to be involved with sports some shape, form or fashion. I was able to think about this at an early age. Fortunately, I was able to play and see people uh, that made a lot of money at an early age, but yet didn't have anything to show for it once they got done playing or they didn't even plan for their, you know, career, you know, post, post basketball or post football, where the case may be. So at an early age, I was thinking about uh, what I wanted to do once I got some money. You know, growing up playing basketball, we, you know, we, we played for the love of the game and for free from, you know, middle school, high school, college and so forth. But to be able in 2001 to actually play professional basketball and get paid doing something I love, I was like, OK. Now I'm getting some money. What do I want to do with this money? So just the idea and thoughts said, okay, I know I want to be involved with sports, but what would it be? And then the idea of sports uniforms came to mind. Because why? When we were in high school, all the uniforms looked the same. The only thing different was the name across the chest and the color. So uh, after doing my research, a lot of most companies was, was charging a premium for a basic uniform. So this is just a thought idea I had while I was sitting. I was in Holland uh, playing with my man TK and, uh, and uh, Sam Vincent was our coach. So we had the whole Michigan connection to Holland my first year overseas. And then, um, so that, that was just a thought process. I didn't know how the business was going to come about, just something I put on paper. And then God put me in the Philippines the following year, 2002. And what, what happened when I was in the Philippines? I met some manufacturers that could do basketball uniforms. So here I was in 2001, coming up with an idea and goals, not knowing how I was going to reach them. And then a year later, actually able to reach, reach some goals by meeting some manufacturers. So we all started by doing basketball uniforms, obviously, because I know how basketball uniform look, feel, and so forth. And that's where we're you know, as we continue to talk, it'll be more about relationships. Uh, everything for me is really about relationships. So playing at University of Detroit Mercy, uh, playing, uh, you know, professional ball, but I knew a lot of athletic directors and high school coaches in Detroit. So that kind of gave me an end. No, no, no doubt your, 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 uh, your items and your apparel have to be on point. You have to have quality, but, you know, relationships allow you to get in the door. And the first school that we ever did was Detroit Finney High School, who uh, the head coach there was E.J. Harrelson, who was my college teammate. And now the current assistant coach at uh, Wayne State University. Uh, so, yeah, like, you know, all started with basketball uniforms. And then we've grown on to do many other sports, obviously, football, track, volleyball, soccer, so forth. And then we had a retail side of things. So now we have two sides of the business. But when we first started off, it was just uniforms only. But now we focus on uniforms and retail. Oh, well, and, and I love that. I love that story because you got to be able to evolve and grow. Um, and, and it had to be. You had to be a little nervous um, to to take that next step, you know, because I know some people you got to get out your comfort zone. Your comfort zone probably was basketball uniforms, but yet you said track and you know all these different sports. So, what was it that made you get out of your comfort zone to uh, to, to 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 move the business to expand uh, what you were doing? I had to. I mean, the thing you know me, man. I'm more laid back, cool, calm, and collective. You know, not a whole lot of talking all the time, but it made me you know, not be quite a salesman, but get out there and, and talk a little more. But that, you know, I was just confident in uh, in the product and the things that we're doing. But, you know, you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. And I knew in order to grow the business uh, that I was going to have to, you know, get out there and really talk to people and and, uh, and build those relationships that I've already, you know, built on top of relationships that I already had started. But that's kind of, you know, where everything comes from. I, I want to go back earlier than that, Desmond. I want to go back to, you know, when you're when you're getting this thing up off the ground. You know, because you're still playing professionally, mm -hmm. you, you got your degree in business administration. So you you have some knowledge of, of what business is all about. 
as you mentioned earlier, you've got that entrepreneurial spirit going back to your days cutting hair. Um, but but as you're getting this business going, and you really want to make this a thing and make sure that it's going to succeed, uh, what was that like? How did that process work? Um, well, I, I remember coming home from the Philippines, and the first thing I did was get some T-shirts printed up and made. And I, uh, an old high school a friend of mine at the time, you know, graphic graphic wasn't good, so we was, you know, he hand drew a, a logo for me. And I just gave the T-shirts out to friends and family. And uh, at that time, I was still, you know, playing open gym a lot up at Michigan State. So I give it up to the Michigan State guys and just kind of get the word out. Uh, but it was a gradual process because, you know, I, I played professional basketball to 2011. So when I first started business, it was, it was like a hobby, you know what I'm saying? It was something I enjoyed. And then it grew into a legitimate hustle and then an actual uh, full-blown business. But it's just been different different phases because I was, you know, rather I was playing overseas, gone mm-hmm. six, seven months out of the year it's tough to really grow something, you know, it was more so maintaining. And then when I retired from playing uh, basketball, I ended up coaching at my high school for five years. So it allowed me, I was back home. So the business took a, took a little more growth, but at the same time, I was still focused on the, the young fellows and coaching. And then I re- retired from coaching in 2017, the business took another step. So it's been, it's been a gradual process. It hasn't just been only money ball for, you know, 18 years now, but you know, the last uh, three or four years, uh, it's been my only focus where, you know, no part of basketball, meaning playing or coaching. Yeah, uh, well, a lot of people, um, there's, uh, you know, have to, a lot of successful people have to adapt and adjust, you know, as um, far as moving uh, your business forward for you. Because I, I know everything, I know you had an idea for it, and I know everything just didn't go your way. Yes. So can you just talk a little bit about having to um, to adapt and adjust as you're moving your business forward? Yeah, uh, you know, for me and for us, everything has kind of been, uh, you know, trial and error. I mean, you know, the best experience, I mean, the best teacher is a, is an experience. So uh, just been been learning on the go and bumping your head and making those mistakes because, you know, growing up, no one even, you know, you know, taught us how to, you know, about business, let alone how to run a business. So just through, uh, you know, tra- trial and error. But, you know, just just the, just the, the nature of the business, when you talk about uniforms, when we first started uh, uniforms, everything was about, big baggy you know tackle twill you know it was, it was a much bigger look now you know then we moved on to sublimation as you see now these kids are you know wearing basketball shorts that look like draws you know saying straight straight <laughs> underwear so those, you know you have to be able to adjust with the times and, and usually uh the market and and people will show you that you know what i'm saying so uh it, it taught me to really pay attention to what's going on whether you're looking at you know high school sports college sports pro sports uh a lot of times they'll uh, if they didn't set the trend, they'll, they'll keep the trends moving forward. So uh, you try to get on board before it gets you know too late. So really adapting and adjusting from uh, that standpoint and just you know learning as you go. And let me and let me ask this while while we're on that subject. And it, it was a kind of uh, different for you because sometimes I'm sure you wanted to go with what you like. You know, it's like okay, I like that style or the shorts or the shirt. Yeah. And did you have to adapt to what people, what the other, what people like? Definitely. I mean. Even taking it from a retail standpoint, like uh, when people start wearing all the tight joggers and stuff like that, and you know we still a little bad. I'm like, no, nah, that ain't my stilo. But it, it may not be what I like. But if the consumer customer like it, we we, we got to go ahead and roll with it. You know what I'm saying? And then I may come in on the back end, but you know if if the people are asking for it, uh, we get we got to give it to them. So you know just, just stuff like that. It, it allows me to take myself out of the situation. You know what I'm saying? If I got a hundred people liking something and I don't like it, if I go against that, that's just bad for business. You know what I'm saying? So. Now we need to uh, make those adjustments and, and, and do what the and do what the consumer wants. Well, I want to ask you, Desmond, about the um, you know the item Matina and I were talking about off the top of the show, and that is sports to business, the parallels that exist there. Um, you played basketball for a long time, mm. collegiately, professionally. You coached, like you said, in high school. What were and are the lessons you've taken from basketball and applied to your business? Man, it's, it's so many, uh, you know, sports has been the foundation for my growth, not only as a athlete, but as a, as a man, as a person, as a father, as a, as a businessman, uh, I would say a few things, uh, self-discipline, uh, work ethic and, uh, teamwork, you know what I'm saying? Those, those are probably the three, uh, top things. Uh, and, you know, I can touch on each one different, uh, you know, yes, you know, playing a, a sport, you know, business is the ultimate sport, you know? When you're talking about, you know, basketball, football, whatever, win, lose, draw, you go home, you know what I'm saying? You're still alive. It's all good. You know, but when you're talking about uh, growing a business and uh, 
putting food on the table and making shit lights on and, and paying rent or mortgage and things like that. Like that's when it really gets real. Uh, there is no, if you, if you lose in business, you can lose in many other places, you know, in your life where sports, uh, you know, you no, know, not, not so much. So, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much that. Um, I lost my train. I want to go. I want yeah, to say, you were you, you, you were yeah. talking about you know just some of the principles. And I know you mentioned you mentioned yeah. self discipline, yep. uh, and, and teamwork. So if you want to kind of dive into that, Definitely. yep. So uh, you know I, I like to treat uh, the sport of business just like you know I, I treat the you know, basketball, and that's me. That's first one in, last one out. Like I still get, I, I I have a lot of joy and pride of being able to get up at five in the morning, be in the office by six, knowing that my competition may still be asleep. And I did the same thing on the basketball court. You know, I was blessed with the ability to shoot the ball, you know, height and work ethic, but I wasn't always the fastest, the most athletic, the quickest. Uh, so I had to really uh, get in the gym and work. And, 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 and I think the sports allowed me to get a, a really good work ethic that I was able to carry over to, to, to business and, and ultimately be successful in both. And you mentioned you mentioned team, you know, and and how important is team? Because sometimes I know, uh, you know, some some entrepreneurs or some people that own businesses, like they try to do everything, you know, yeah. it has to be their way or the highway or they, 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 they don't delegate, you know, uh, they're afraid to delegate, you know, to others. Uh, so can you talk a little bit how important, you know, having a team, a good team around you uh, helps you become successful in business? Uh, having a team is huge, especially starting off as a small business because you wear so many hats and you have to do so many things. And now we've been able to grow, as we've been able to grow over the years, uh, sometimes it's been tough for me to let go of certain things uh, in order for the business to grow. And, you know, obviously sports taught me that, you know, as a player, but even as, as a, when I became a, a high school basketball head coach, that really taught me how to delegate. You know, I had my assistant, especially, you know, uh, having the kids, practice time, game time, having a business, uh, and then having a son, it was a lot of things going on that I couldn't do everything. So I had to, I had to, had to delegate and let go of some things that I may want to hold on to, but, but be able to trust my teammate, or trust my coaching staff, or uh, uh, trust one of my associates to know that they can they can they can get it done. So uh, delegating for me has been tough, no doubt about it. It's, it's been tough, but it's something that's been needed for us to continue to grow. And that all comes from uh, teamwork and, and being able to work with others. I mean, if you just grow up, you know, playing uh, maybe tennis or you know something that's just an individual sport or track, sometimes you don't always have to defend defend on your team. But uh, when you do growing up playing basketball, obviously, you know, 12, 15 guys on the team, you have to depend on others, the coaching staff and so forth, and being able to just translate that to business. We, we've asked, um, you know, several of our, our guests who, who have been former professional athletes this question, I want to ask you as well. Um, and, and maybe it's different for you because you um, already had your business going while you were still playing. Um, was it tough for you to walk away? Um, from from your career as a professional athlete to go into business, I mean, or, or for you, was it basically just like, nope, this is the, this is the time to do yeah, it? No, it, it it wasn't for me. Uh, you know, I, I, it was my last probably four or five years. I, I was able to do business with the teams that I worked with that I, that I played for, so they were getting uniforms from us. You know, it was, it was you know, uh, so not only was I just you know on the court, you know, knocking out some threes, I was able to see behind the scenes and learn the business. Uh, side of things and that was huge uh you know for our for our overall growth but uh I always said like I didn't want to and not that I was like you know uh, you know all 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 uh, all star for a number of years but I didn't want to be Patrick Ewing you know with the Orlando Magic going through the lane throwing up you know hooks that didn't look good no more uh <laughs> I, I want to walk away from the game on my own terms and away, you know injury free I was I was fortunate enough not to have any major injuries uh, during my career so it was time, you know what I'm saying? It was when, when I, when I, when I decided to hang it up, uh, I was sore every day, you know what I'm saying? It took, took much longer to get it going. Uh, and you know, so I, I walked away at a, at a, at a perfect time. So I was able to, you know, write my own story and not have to leave because of an injury or because of, you know, I needed the money to continue playing and so forth. So, uh, I was happy when I did walk away. And, and, I, and, I, and one thing I, I, I grew the business to a point where, I could go straight from playing to the business. And that's, that, that was, that was key as well. Like I didn't want to, I didn't want to leave playing basketball and have to do something else in order for the business to maintain. I want to make that smooth transition and I was able to do that. So you, so, so now you, you know what Michael Jordan felt like, you know, Michael <laughs> Jordan out there on the basketball court, people wearing his tennis shoe, you playing yeah. basketball and they're wearing your Jersey. Like that's a first, you gotta yeah. be the first player. I know, you know, that owned, 
you know, that actually made the jerseys that the team played in. I yeah. Mean, if, I mean, even my last year I was playing up in Canada, Hal Halifax, Nova Scotia, and we were doing the whole league at the time while I was still playing in the game. We did the all-star, the, the all-star, uh, you know, game, all the uniforms and everything. So it's, it's a good feeling knowing that, you know, here I am competing against this cat, you know what I'm saying? And he got on the, he got on the money ball logo right on his jersey while we playing. So that was <laughs> well, he, well, he couldn't talk trash because it's like, you, man, yeah. listen, you got my logo yeah. on your shirt, so you can't talk trash to me. Now, let me, let me ask this question because I think it's important for our listeners to hear. I'm sure even though you did business with some of the teams you played on and, you know, even some of the teams you played against, you did a lot of business with them. But I'm sure every door you knocked on didn't open. I'm sure there was doors that closed in your face. Yeah. So how, how did you handle that, especially when you're you, as an athlete, you're used to a lot of people saying yes, 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 because who you are. So how did you handle those situations? Man, I, uh, I, I've i been blessed to always feel that even during the down moments that something positive is going to happen. And I mentioned playing in 11 different countries. I was 11 different countries outside the U.S. and not including, you know, uh, CBA and not including USBL, not including short stint with the NBA. So I, I tell God, I went overseas, but I, I damn near probably got cut more than I, I lasted over there. And even uh, the last time I got cut was uh, was a blessing. Uh, I was in uh, I was in Spain. I was in Granada, Spain. I was over there only for like a few weeks. They let me go. They say one of four man. I wasn't a four man. I was a wing. I was a shooter, so forth. But they cut me. And then a few weeks later, somebody in the CBA got hurt right before the playoffs and I was able to fill that spot in Rockford. And that's how I got the call to to NBA to get my 10 days. So if I didn't get cut in Spain, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to live a lifelong dream playing in the NBA. So a lot of times I think, you know, a lot of us quit right before we about to receive our blessings, you know, even through adversity. And it's, it's a lot of adversity when you play in sports at a professional level or just in general. And I've always been able one to just, you know, get back up and, and keep going. But uh, it's been many different situations overseas where I got cut. But still so, so you got cut went because I want I want our listeners to know I, I don't want it to go past them. You got yeah. cut from overseas. You go down to the CBA, which is kind of like the, today's NBA G League. You yeah, know, yeah. it's a minor league for the NBA kind of that had affiliations with NBAs. And you go down there, and then you get called up to the NBA, the Portland Trailblazers, right? Yep. Wow. So, you know, I got a I got a quick story for you, right? So I was uh so I went to play in Rockford, Illinois. Uh I had like, you know, three or four 30 point games within the in the uh in the C in the CBA. We got we got eliminated the playoffs, eliminated playoffs. And I was like, dang, I was came back from Spain. I was sitting home for a little while before I went on the CBA. It was almost like I was gonna start over. It was almost like rock bottom. I remember driving back to Lansing, Michigan. Uh got a call from John Starks at the time. He was the head coach GM of a, a USBL team. I was, about, I was about ready to do that. Then I got a call from my agent, like, look, you got to work out for Portland, you know what I'm saying, possibly 10 days, you know, they seen what you did just in the CBA. So I'm driving home. I stopped through Chicago, my man, Mac Irvin Crib, hang out with him. We went to the club. First time in my life, saw Michael Jordan up in the club, seeing him, like, okay, boom. Went back to Lansing. Uh, Lansing Everett at the time was playing Benton Harbor, where they had uh, Chandler and those guys. They beat him in, like, double overtime. Ever, they, won the, they won the state championship a year. That was 04. So, boom. Next morning, I get on the highway. I got, got my flight going to Portland. I'm on the highway, 96 to 275, in, in the rain. A hydroplane getting a horrible accident. Four lanes. I'm in the fourth lane in the middle. Turn Hydroplane all the way back around. I'm, my car is facing all kind of cars coming at me. I get hit, go in the ditch, miss my flight, got a big knot on my head. Like Mike Tyson knocked me out. I'm like, man, now I missed my opportunity to go into the NBA or at least get a workout. I said, man, this is going to be tough. Uh, was able to reschedule my flight, get out to Portland, still got that big knot in my head, had to work out against some other guys uh, that had already been in the NBA. I was so focused, uh, probably more focused than I've ever been in my life, and it was just a workout. And uh, we had like we had like four games to get seven, and I probably had like five, three of them games, five of the seven. You know, mm -hmm. the, the GM was there, the coach scouts were there, everything. They let us know, okay, we'll let you know who's going to get the 10-day. They went back in their room, came. Uh, I actually went to the went to the game that night. They Portland versus uh, for Houston Rockets. I remember Mo, Mo Taylor was out there. Yeah, had Yao Ming. They came and grabbed me at halftime. Said we're gonna choose you. For, you know, ten day. Do you want to go home and get your clothes? I'm like, I ain't giving y'all no chance of saying saying I ain't coming back. I don't need no clothes. I'm here to stay. Sign my ten day. So it was a very unique situation. How I even and that, and that was adversity itself right there. How I even was able to you know live a lifelong dream and play in the NBA through the car accident through. Uh, being done the CBA, thinking I had to go back to the USBL, 
to you know compete against guys who are already were in the NBA where I hadn't been to even the NBA training camp yet, and you know just to have that focus and drive, and and I'll work them in that workout in order to get my ten days. So and that's a little bit of adversity. Man, yeah. <laughs> that's a, that that is a story right there uh, with, yes. with the knot on yeah, your I'll head. I'll tell that story too much, but yep, yep. Yeah. You should. Yeah. <laughs> that's impressive. You were, man, you were you were locked in just because you'd been through such a stressful uh, and traumatic experience with the car accident, and like you said, thinking that your your chance may have slipped through your fingers. Um, you mentioned earlier, you know, that shooting always came naturally to you. You know, yeah. that was your 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 skill. Um, that was your calling card as a player. So when I think of shooting, I think of precision. So now let's let's spin that to the business side because I, I asked you um, when we spoke previously, you know, how do you guys differentiate yourselves as a company? And you told me there are three advantages uh, that that Moneyball has. So I want you to to share this with our audience because I feel like this is this is valuable stuff here, not just when it comes to to um, apparel, but it can be applied to any any business. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, getting started in, in competitive business uh, such as sportswear apparel, like it's many it's hundreds of thousands and millions of, uh, of companies. So what separates Moneyball Sportswear from the average company? So it's three things in particular, uh, customization, uh, price point, turnaround, and also I like to put in their community, the things that we do in the community uh, that some of these other companies don't do. But start from a customization standpoint, like we're able to customize a uniform however you want it. You can be the only team and only organization in the country with the uniform how you do it. Most, most bigger companies you deal with they're going to give you eight to 10 stock, you know, stock designs and you can kind of pick from there. They can do it, but that's not really what they specialize in the custom. Maybe if you wanted the top programs in the country, they may do that. Uh, so just being able to customize uniforms is what really gives us uh, an advantage over it. And, and there's other companies that can do custom as well, but then it comes to price point. We can do a custom uniform that say a Nike uniform, uh, their, their, their regular in-stock uniform may be $34 more than our custom uniform. So now once again, you're getting a, in stock look from another from a competitor where you can get a custom uniform from us and then our turnaround time which we've been able to take advantage of really particularly around this time of year because uh you know some of the other big companies they've been behind from you know everything that's going on with coronavirus and the whole nine where their lead time is three to four three to four months where here we are coming three to four weeks so that gives us advantage as well and then you see a lot of these companies that come in uh that set up shop and you know, come to communities and, 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 and get money off the community, but they don't give back to the community. And that's something that we really strive in. You know, last 16 years, we've done a free basketball clinic uh, in Lansing for all the kids. And, and Mateen has come over the years and spoke to the kids. And he's, he's been great. Uh, and then we do a, a basketball, uh, a summer basketball program with the college and pro player, players, money bar program we've been doing the last 16 years, as well as whether it be different sock drives or, you know, just giving, uh, giving stuff to the homes that we may have extra you know, uniforms, shorts, you know, T-shirts, whatever. So we're big in community as well. So it, it comes down to customization, uh, price point, our turnaround time, and then what we do in the community. And I and I think that's valuable. You know, I, you know the customize, you know, I think that's great business-wise. But I get excited and I, it warms my heart <clears throat> to, to, to hear about and see the things that you guys do in the community. And the free basketball caps are so valuable because he gave them free basketball caps and bringing in – people from that he made relationships with that played in the NBA and did all these great things to come talk to kids who would never, ever had an opportunity to interact with these people. He's bringing a pro-am basketball to Eastland. He has the best pro-am in the Midwest, hands down. You know, I mean, if and, and, and people, if you're listening and you got time in the summer, get to East Lansing and watch Moneyball because I'm telling you, man, these, I mean, he gets all Michigan State players. So, I mean, you got – one of the top programs in the country, all their players play in it. And you got guys like Draymond Green, who's one of the best ever to play. He plays in a pro. I, I had the luxury of me and my son watching him play in that pro-am. And, yep. you know, Miles Bridges and, you know, all the Cassius Winston, all these greats, you know, not only at Michigan State, but Michigan players and all throughout, they come back and play in that. So I love, I mean, I'm super excited and happy for you what you do business-wise, but I think what you do for the community is that's to me that's more valuable than anything because people are going to benefit from that. Yeah, you know, uh, it's, it's it's great. It's it's great to hear. Um, you know, lo- love that you are are so passionate about about giving back, and that that actually brings me to my next question for you, Desmond, because I remember you telling me that you know one of the biggest challenges you face as a as a small business owner is letting people know you exist as a company. You know, from a marketing mm-hmm. standpoint, because like you said, I mean. Uh, 
you're a small fish in a big pond. I mean, you talked about Jordan and Nike and Adidas. And oh, by the way, uh, for our listeners, Desmond has made no secret about the fact he wants to be on the level uh, as those companies that I just mentioned. So here's the question. How do you do it? How do you let more people know that Moneyball uh, is is a player? Man, we just we just keep grinding. Uh, but you talk about a couple of challenges that we have is just how do we get uh, some random person in a small town in Texas to know about Moneyball or in, in Florida or North Carolina, wherever the case may be. Like that's the biggest challenge. Uh, and also, you know, from playing, you know, ball and everything, like everything has been, you know, self funded. Eventually, we're gonna need some some real capital to get behind it. When I'm talking about competing with the big boys. When we talk about Nike, Under Armour, and Adidas, uh, then you know to eventually be able to get in the shoe game, you know that's a that's an end goal for us. For us, whether that happens in a year or five years from now, uh, those, those that's something that we, we want to do. But it has to be done right. You know, I, I like to study companies on how they're successful or unsuccessful. When I look at uh, Am One, you know, Am One was number two when it came to the basketball shoe for a moment, right behind Nike when they had Vince Carter and Skip the Malou and all those guys. But you know, they, they fell off because they never. They never really, they never really, really grew. Like originally, our logo was a silhouette of me shooting a basketball, and I knew in order for us to grow, that had to change. Only Jordan could get away with him flying a basketball on a baseball uniform or a football uniform. Uh, it was good from a local standpoint, but uh, I, I'm not that, I'm not too much into myself. Uh, where I, I didn't, I knew we had to grow in order to come be, be get on a global level, and that's when we changed our logo. I, I was actually playing in Bulgaria and met some young guys who worked for Spalding at the time, and they designed our, our current logo back in like 04, 05. I held on to it for a little bit, and we dropped it probably like 06, 07. And it was, it was just a more universal uh, logo that can, you know, let us grow uh, outside just the state of Michigan or just outside of the United States. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, to, to grow, uh, we got to continue to increase our marketing at all levels and then, uh, you know, just – you know, get getting the sales and, and, and having some capital to to really take take this thing to another level. And it's I mean, you talked about the ultimate goal is to be able to compete with the Nikes, the Adidas, and all those big boys. But you know, just for our listeners and somebody that maybe can take something from this, how important is it to even set goals? Because I know a lot of people are afraid to set goals. And one of my main you know sayings is you know your will to win must be greater than your fear of losing. So mm-hmm. people that they won't set goals because a lot of them are afraid if we don't hit it. If I, oh man, if I don't hit it. But for you, you know, because I set them in basketball and now business being the, you know in business, I set them in business as well. But for you, um, are you a goal setter and how is, is important is setting goals in your opinion? Huge, uh, huge. Uh, you know, I meet with my team every month and we have certain goals, whether it be sales goals or you know item goals that we may focus on that we try to hit. And uh, we've been able to grow about a 20 percent rate, you know, each particular year. But it's almost like uh, if you're setting goals and you're always attaining them, then you're not setting your goals high enough. So I almost like to set goals that we don't reach, but we come close to uh, because in, as opposed to just, you know, OK, we're going to grow two percent. You know, at, at where we are right now, you know, my, I want to be able to grow 50 percent, 100 percent. I want to take it all the way to a to another level. So it's like, look. You know, we got to make this thing happen by everyday grind. And it's through the consistency, everything that we do every day and every week. We can't just say, okay, my goal is to do this 12 months from now. And we just halfway going through the motion and then come to eight months. Oh, we only got four months left. And then we're trying to grind it out. No, we're going to do this every day and be consistent so we can reach those goals. When when other people ask you um, about, you know, achieving success in business, um, you know, how much do you kind of – lean on the fact that you're doing something that you truly love. I mean, basketball has been a part of your life for a long time. Sports has been a part of your life for a long time. And obviously it's not just something you do for work. It's something you do because you love it. Yeah. I mean, when you're advising somebody who maybe is thinking about going to business for themselves, I mean, does that have to be a part of it? Do you have to truly love what you're doing? I believe so. I know there's, there's pretty many, there's, there's many millionaires and people in business that, that's able to just get money off something that they don't, they don't like. But I really believe it'll be something that you're passionate about, uh, that you love, that you wake up to do. Like I would do this if I wasn't even getting paid from doing it. And, I, and that's what I tell people. Like, what, what is it that you're passionate about? What do you have a love for that you would do even if you were getting paid? Because then when the money comes, that's just, that's, that, that's secondary. Like, no, don't get me wrong. We in business to make money, but I really believe you got to do something uh, that you're passionate about. And even starting off, that was, you know, tough for me when you're talking about, adding team members and people that's helping you reach these, these daily and yearly goals is, you know, I have friends that I sat and told about the business and, 
you know, a sound fine and anybody when there ain't no money coming in early, you know, you're not really with it. And it's tough to get people to understand your vision and your goal and make them come on. And, and I've been fortunate enough to have some team members that, you know, that's all in on, of something I've started and, and, and came up with. But I don't like to say people work for me. I like to say they work with me because I need those team members in order for us to grow uh, pretty much. Wow. And that, that's a heck of a statement now, you know, because we we work with the guy that has that same sentiment. You know, it's like, uh, I mean, here's a guy that's super successful in business and you will never, ever hear him say they work for me. Yeah. And um, so where did that come from? Where did that mentality come from with you, Des? Well, I've always tried to just remain humble. Like I, I, I'm more so, you know, I'm cool with being behind the scenes. I'm not that person that got to be in front of the video camera or, you know, saying getting all the getting all the props or whatnot. You know, it's, it's, it's just truly about the process. You know what I'm saying? It's even like when you think, you know, and, and you can speak as an athlete, like, yeah, we, we, we go for that championship to, to you know, be number one when it's all standing. But when you look back at it, it's the process that I really enjoy. You know, yes, we want to be number one sportswear in the company in the world. But I love getting up every single day and working towards that. You know, not always thinking about the end goal in mind. It's, it's what I'm going to do today to help us get there day after day after day after day that I really enjoy. It's the journey, not the destination, Mateen. Yep. That's that's what yes. Desmond, you just said. That reminded me of that. Um, so so many people uh, say that that same thing. You know, they just they they're focused obviously on what they want to do and what they want to accomplish, but not at the expense of the grind of what it's going to take, uh, yep. the work that you have to put in every single day. Um, Mateen kind of touched on this, and I want to piggyback off of it. You know, you played for a lot of different coaches. You were a lot of, around a lot of different leaders. What did you take from those uh, those people uh, that were in your life? Um, and, and now, how do you describe yourself as, as a leader? Well, yeah, uh, just in general, sports has been huge for me. You know, growing up without a father, like my coaches were my father figures and role models. So uh, I obviously learned the game of sports on fine, all fine and Danny, but just the game of life and how similar sports is in the game of life and how to treat people fair. And, and, and I've had people that I've played against rather than coaches, rather than players that now I'm able to do business with them because not thinking that, I, okay, I got to act all right now, you know, for something down the line, but just from the standpoint that you treat people right and one, one, one way or another, it's going to come back to you in, in a good way. So it all go back to me for, you know, building and handling relationships, like, you know, playing with guys overseas that's now high school coaches, college coaches, athletic directors. Now I'm able to do business with them, not not even thinking about that way back then. So uh, really, really the relationships and uh, and seeing, uh, you know, my, my coaches just just lead and be great stand up men and and husband and and, uh, and and fathers. And that's that's what I really look for and kind of yearn for in my life. That I was able to get out of my coaches. Man, we, we, we keep, sorry, Mateen, we, we, no, keep, go ahead. we keep hearing you go back to, you know, relationships and networking. And I can, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, I can only imagine how many different people you have in your phone. I mean, back up your phone, man, because you must have so <laughs> many different contacts Dude. from all the different places you've been. I mean, and that, and that obviously has played a part in not just your success, but your longevity doing this for as long as you've done it now. I mean, I'm sitting right here talking with you because of the relationship that I have, you know, me and Mateen have, uh, we go back, man. We we played together first. It was like ninth grade. I remember I was Lansing Warriors versus Clint affiliation. We played down in Birmingham, Michigan. Uh, it was like an AAU junior pro tournament, whatever. And we was going at it. Like we, our the, the teams had to pause. Like we we almost physically got to fighting. And I remember they beat us maybe like one two points or so forth. But that was my first introduction to my team, Cleves. And then fast forward, you know, throughout high school, uh, you know, I was him winning state championship, going to Final Four. You know, us playing, you know making a little run in high school, AAU. And then uh, I remember going to Missouri and they was trying to get him in Missouri and I'm contacting him, trying to get him out there. And then coming back to University of Detroit Mercy where I had to sit out, and, you know, his, his freshman year. And we just kept a, you know, a, a great relationship. And, you know, I remember when he bought his mom at that house and staying at his mom's house and, you know, she accepted me like I was her own. And uh, when they won a national championship, I won a national championship. You know what I'm saying? That's when, when my team was lottery pick, I was – in the white bands rolling around, you know what I'm saying? Going to the going to the uh, Pistons practice facility, working out. You know, I'm having money ball parties. He coming down. You know, I'm having free basketball clinics. He coming down. So relationships is what, what it's all about for me. You know, that it's, you know, basketball has allowed me to build those relationships where I'm thankful for. But that's what I probably miss the most when you talk about the playing days and just the relationships I've been able to establish with folks that now, you know, it, it's, it's guys I may have played overseas for two months and now we got lifelong relationships. So that, that's huge. And I just carry that over to business. 
Yeah, I, I'm glad you hit on that, Dash, because I think relationships is super important. I try to tell, I, I meet with a lot of leaders all the time, and I tell them, you know, you want to get the best out of the people you're leading, build a relationship with them, build that rapport with them, because then they're, they're going to give you everything they got. So, you know, building those relationships is very important. And another thing, Dez, I got to ask you about, because I, I talked to this young man the other day, and he said, you know, I'm going to school, and I'm, you know, I'm working, you know, at UWM, I'm, you know, but I'm just waiting to be successful. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, you are successful right now. It's happening. Like I said, open your eyes. It's happening for you, man. You who there's not many people that can work and, and go to school full time and you know still and make it happen. Like for you, um, because I know you are driven, you know, the ultimate goal is to, to compete with the Nikes and all that and the Adidas. But do you ever have you ever had those moments too where you had to pull yourself back and say, Well, wait a minute, I am doing pretty good. You know, I'm not where I want to be, but well, let me put, sit back and relax and, and, and embrace this and enjoy this for a second. Have you ever had any of those moments? Yeah, and I, I like to try to have more of those moments because, like I said, you always think about the next goal. Okay, reach that. Okay, that's fine and dandy, but that's not the end goal. The next one, the next one where, like, damn, okay, damn, we we have achieved something. You know, we have been successful. You know, you know, most businesses close within the first three years. You know, we've been we almost going on, you know, 20 years. So I, I am able to sit back and reflect on it, but – I'm not able to bask in it too much because that's just that's just how my mind works. It's always the next. Okay, we got we got to get better. Okay, oh, we got that. Okay, that's fine. And Danny, but that ain't the end, ain't the end goal. So I, I struggle with that. You know, I struggle <laughs> with that. Even looking back, you know, uh, as a high school coach, you know, uh, at every high school when I came in, you know, ever was ten and seventy two over a four year period. You know, and that wasn't that wasn't cool in my eyes. Just my alma mater, and we won six games the first year, seven the next, and then we went to twenty four and three. Uh, final, you know, final four. And the next year we was 10 and 10 and went to the final four, brothers. So back to back. And that first year we had a really good team, 24 and three with Trevor Manuel, who won Oregon and so forth. Really good player. But uh, I didn't really enjoy it. I'm telling the kids to enjoy it, but I was so focused on, you know, getting the next game, next game. Whereas the next year I came back, I really enjoyed that because I let the kids do their thing and I was able to just enjoy the moment. So that taught me, that taught me that as well. And I, like I said, I try to carry that over the business, but you're always thinking about, you know, the next, the next battle, the next hurdle to over, have to overcome. Well, what one accomplishment I know you had to celebrate uh, was getting a deal done with Michigan State University. Uh, there's a great story that, that comes with this and it involves the pandemic and a lot of obstacles you had to overcome. So, so tell our listeners, Desmond, how this came about. That's crazy. Just in that moment, I'm like, I told a couple stories. They're like, I'm not necessarily a storyteller, but I guess I got a couple stories, you know, here and there. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so it all started. Uh, we do soccer uniforms for a club called the Wit Soccer Club here in Lansing, and uh, we've always had a T-shirt that said "Go Green," dating back to 06, 07. You know, "Go Green" because we didn't have a, a MSU license, so we always kind of played off, you know, Michigan State Spartans, green and white, so forth. "Go Green, Go White," uh, not knowing that, well, as of recently, not knowing that MSU trademark go green, go white in like 2016 and so forth. So uh, we do the uniform, soccer uniforms for the Wiz Soccer Club. It just so happened one of the girls, her mother is the head of licensing for MSU. So, you know, she ordered from Mr. Whole Nine, boom, oh, I like the business. She goes on our Instagram. On our Instagram, she see we got a shirt that say go green, go white. She instantly emailed, call us like, you got to take that down, that's trademark infringement. You know, we can sue y'all, blah, blah. You know, I'm like, oh man, you know what I'm saying? And I was a, a decent selling shirt for us, you know, because we had in the shirt, t-shirt, the hoodie, and so forth. I'm like, oh, she's messing with my bread. But at the same time, <laughs> at the same time, she was really tough about it, like, you know, really tough, you know. Uh, but at the same time, she taught me the process of how to go about actually getting a license, which was good because I've always said I won the license. And, you know, well, like I said, we talk about the big boys, they have the, you know, the professional sports, the collegiate team, so forth, but we never had a license doing anything. So uh, she kind of talked us through the process, walked through the process. And MSU was one of the hardest, toughest universities to get a license through for whatever reason. But it took us about a year and a half, and we were finally able uh, to get that license. So we had it uh, early in the year. We were going to drop it for NCAA tournament time, but COVID came. We were going to drop it first day of school. COVID's still here. Football, same thing. And then once the season finally came, we said, okay, we can drop it. And uh, we've been getting a huge response. But uh, that's just hopefully the first of many. Uh, but, yeah, just just – Having a little adversity once again, something that we have a sale and some of the item that we are selling, making decent money off, then it has to stop. Why does it have to stop? We're not, you know, using a Spartan head about, you know, but through the rules and regulations, I found out why. But it allows us to get our first our first licensing deal, which should be the first of many. 
And I think that's a that's a that story in itself is is a great story of of showing resiliency, uh, because you couldn't like you said it was it was messing with your money at first, and you you could have got frustrated and but yet no okay, how do we go about this the right way? You know, let me learn on how to do this the right way and 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 find out how to benefit from it. So that's that's to me that's a, a powerful story because a lot of people just would have just left it alone. But no, not you. You found out, you sat and met with the lady and found out how to do it the right way. And now I think you're going to benefit big time from it. Yeah, I mean, go back to what you were saying earlier, you know, when you talk about adversity, like it's it's always something. I mean, you know, life, you know, sports, whatever, it's always some type of adversity. And I've always just felt where there's a will, there's a way we're going to overcome that adversity. Like as long as you're not dead, I mean, you're dead, you're dead. You know, you can't end up coming back from that. But you can, you can always keep going. And that's just kind of always been, of my mindset for any and everything. And, and another story of how, you know, a relationship, uh, you know, pays off for you. And, and I'm sure, you know, you know, going back to your, your playing days, you weren't best friends with everybody who you went on to do business with. Like you said, you may know somebody for two months in some foreign country, fast forward years down the road, they might be buying jerseys from you. So here's my question for you, Desmond, as we, as we come to the close here, what is your advice for others out there when it comes to networking, you know, and, and relationships and, and truly uh, placing a value on every single person you meet because you never know what might happen with that person down the road. Yeah, I'm big on it being organic. Like I'm not a person that's trying to force anything. You, you got to have organic relationships and it just can't be about the right now. You know, you can just meet somebody and, and pass in and high and by and you may see that person a year from now, five years from now, more conversation, may know mutual people. It may it may it may grow to something uh, even even bigger. But I've always tried to, you know, I always maintain uh, being just a good, a good person, you know, a good person and not even not even hoping that it's going to come back to me some shape, form or fashion. But eventually it, it always does when you carry yourself the right way, when you treat people right. And that's what we try to do uh, on, the, on the business tip it always. And, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a trust factor there. You know what I'm saying? So if you know somebody is a good person, they, they stand up and they're going to be truthful. Then, you, you, you know, you're more likely to do business with them than not. You know, I look at people um, like some people that, you know, minor league coaches, you know, they, they have NBA minds, but they're just in the minor leagues. You look at some people that players that play at mid majors and, you know, they, they have this certain chip on their shoulder. See, because you're playing in the arena with some big boys, you know, you Nike, Adidas and all these different people. So um, do you have like and, and even now I work at U, United, UWM, I work at UWM wholesale mortgage and our CEO, he was a guy that had a chip on his shoulder. He was smaller than everybody else. I played with him at Michigan state. He had a chip on his shoulder. He had to, just to be able to fit in. He had to work 10 times harder than everybody else just to be on that same level. Now for you, you're competing with these big boys. Do you have uh, that, you know, that chip on your shoulder, everything that you do out to prove people that you can be just as successful as some of these bigger companies? Short answer, hell yeah. You, you, <laughs> I mean, you, you know that. I mean, you know, that's just like we're not going too deep, but you know, being in being in high school, you know what I'm saying, being a, a skinny kid that could shoot the rock that, you know, was maybe mid-major, most people th- going mid-major, went to Missouri, you know, who just, you know, went to the lead eight and, you know, had a Detroit pipeline and everything. Went to Missouri, wasn't successful from the standpoint getting on court and doing things, had to transfer to University of Detroit Mercy, which some people didn't even know about or thought that was a division two school. And then they, you know, for us to turn that program around and have a success that we have. And then, uh, okay, you know, had a good college career. He's going to go work, whatever. No, I want to play professional basketball. You know what I'm saying? Want to play professional basketball. And we talk about the ups and downs and the scenic route, rather than down playing in the Flint Fuse in the CBA, you know what I'm saying? Making $500 a week, you know, six, six, six cats in the car driving 24 hours to a, to a, to a game in Canada uh, to playing overseas to, you know, having a, a chance in the NBA uh, to, you know, where we are right now, you know, I, I relish the underdog role because that's what we are, you know what I'm saying? And that's what I've been my whole life. And it keeps that chip on your shoulder to grind. Like, I don't – when I'm back against the wall, that's when I feel that I'm best. That's, you know, as a as an athlete, as a as a businessman, like, I got to have that, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know no other way, you know what I'm saying? So to be able to have that chip on the shoulder and be underdog is something that we relish in. And, and we are the underdog company that, that can, you know, come compete with the other ones, other, the big boys. That, that was a loaded question, Mateen. You you knew. You knew he's got a chip on his shoulder, but I'm glad, but I'm glad you asked it because it, it gave us a great response right there from Desmond. Uh, Desmond Ferguson, great stuff. 
uh, Moneyball Sportswear. Uh, if you're in need of jerseys, look them up because we know this. They can customize them for you. They got a great turnaround time, and their price point is pretty competitive. Right, Desmond? Yeah, hey, you know what to say. <laughs> hey, maybe, maybe I'll come do some work for you. You never know. Hey, another. Hey, you, hey, you definitely got the voice. Ain't no question about it. I appreciate <laughs> that. All that. Another example of a, of a connection made. Uh, Desmond, thanks so much for uh, for taking time for us today. We uh, we really uh, appreciate it and uh, continued success with all of the uh, the things that are still to come for you and Moneyball. Yeah, I, I appreciate y'all having me and good luck uh, as y'all continue to push the, uh, the podcast forward as well.